in case you want to uh, uh, check back on this uh, video, uh, you want to make sure that you get all the important points uh, through this video, I would upload this uh, video onto my YouTube channel, which you will see in a moment. So, uh, so don't have to worry about missing out, don't have to worry about keeping all the notes, but you do have to uh, make sure that you get all the main points ready. Okay, so welcome here. I see many uh, familiar faces uh, with the names. So, uh, so first, I want to just do a little advertising that uh, we are uh, we are doing this uh, online SAT prep beginning next week. So, if you're interested, make sure you email me or let me know. Okay. All right. So now, uh, if you happen to not be here for the last uh, webinar uh, on the college essay writing, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go there and subscribe and watch the video again. So uh, if you are a junior student who is going to apply college, or if you are a sophomore who wants to get started, get a head start on college essay writing, uh, make sure you uh, check out the video so that you can get some um, extra ex assistance. Okay, and if you like it, uh, and uh, we always welcome donation uh, because of the pandemic, uh, our income is basically uh, very limited. So if you like it, any amount would help. Okay, so today we will go ahead and answer a few questions in this uh, webinar. Uh, the few questions are how to choose a major, how to tell if you, uh, how, to, how do you tell that uh, you chose the right major, okay? Should I choose a minor? How does uh, choosing a major affect your school selection? Okay, now, before we go into the, uh, the meat, the core of this, uh, of this um, topic, I just wanna say one thing that uh, everyone should uh, be aware of. I understand that uh, choosing the right major is very important. Uh, it, uh, it would leverage uh, many things uh, in terms of your future. But there's one very important thing that you should be aware of, and that is uh, don't think about uh, picking the right answer, okay? Uh, it is, nobody knows if what you're choosing is going to be, is going to be the thing uh, forever, okay? Uh, make sure you don't think about, I have to get this right, okay? We can't, we simply can't because we don't know the future. So the right mentality as we think about major is uh, like what makes you the most happy? What makes you uh, the most, uh, get, what gives you the most satisfactory meaning of life, okay? So if you go with that direction, then you have a better chance of getting it right, okay? But if you aim for the right answer and then you search for the right answer, it actually could backfire. So, so just make sure that I've, say, I, I've said it, uh, I said it uh, way ahead of time so that, uh, that I don't forget, okay? Now, uh, let's look at some facts when we talk about college majors. So here are some statistics. So you have uh, about two thirds of the students, okay, back in 2011, 2012, some uh, data that we have had in the past. Uh, so two thirds of the people who do not change majors. So a third of them actually do change majors. And, uh, and among them, okay, there are people, a small percentage of people, they change majors two times or more. So one thing that I've heard when I was young uh, from my teachers is that changing major, it's pretty usual, okay? And in the, in the United States, uh, we have a somewhat flexible system to change major. So it is okay. It is okay to change major, okay? Because, you know, as we grow up, we get to know ourselves more, we see more things, we have more experience, and we realize that, hey, that's something I wanna do. Okay, so now I will share my own experience that I did not really change my major, but I did a little tweak, okay? So I graduated with my chemistry degree, but it was not the original chemistry degree. Original, the original chemistry degree that I was hoping for was, um, was, uh, was to study pure chemistry, okay? Just pure chemistry and... Uh, 
and uh, and then I realized I want to be a teacher. So I dropped some. Uh, I didn't have to take some uh, really uh, intense chemistry courses uh, in substitution of the um, uh, education classes. So so there was a minor tweak, but still I was staying on course to finish my chem degree. And it will be a to me, I was kind of late to realize what I wanted to do. So, and that also motivated me to give this presentation because I want any students to know the answers earlier, if possible, so that they can um, uh, they can have a better future uh, in the, in the uh, college career years. So here, okay, so uh, the. Uh, uh, the people who decided into these majors and they end up switching majors in the first three years. Okay, so a lot of people they major in math, natural science, engineering, uh, engineering, computer science, or information science. Okay, so so for some reason people are in these fields and they switch out. Okay, to something else. Okay, and then we have. Uh, we have other non-STEM fields, okay? So people go into these majors and they switch to something else, okay? So it, it's not really much of a message here. It's just a show, it's just to show that uh, switching major does happen and whether it happens or not, would it happen to you? It really depends on the process that you find your major. And today we'll go over some tools some work that you can do ahead of time right now to prepare yourself for a better decision in the future. And somehow uh, here we have a little comparison. People who are in STEM, they tend to switch out more often than non-STEM major. Uh, I would venture a guess that uh, the people who would like to be in the STEM major because uh, the vibe, uh, the rush into STEM uh, industry, uh, they, but then they underestimated it or they did not like it or they were not capable of it uh, to finish the STEM major, so they switch. Okay, so it happens, it happens. Uh, I do want to say this, uh, just an an anecdotal uh, account uh, from my personal observation when I was at UT Austin, that um, uh, when I was at UT Austin, there are a lot of people, they are in, um, they are, in pre-med and that's one interesting about, about pre-med uh, pre-med students they think they are already in the medical school and based on my observation a lot of them they are not capable or they did not realize what medical school it's all about and I also had students uh, in the past that uh, they were very confident in the saying that they would become a doctor but that's nothing that I can observe that they would become a doctor, okay? Like to be a doctor, you need to be very interested in the field of medicine, but they were just words. So, so you will see people who are just words. They don't have actions to back themselves up. So, so here's another thing that I would like you to do in the future, to have some actions to back yourself up. Now, is it easy to switch major? And this is a very important question to consider because it depends on what college, what universities you are going to. So for example, UT Austin, okay, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to switch major, okay? If you want to switch major from one college to another college, it is going to be very hard because you have to stay in the college for at least maybe one or two semesters to have enough credit to have a good GPA in order to submit your internal transfer uh, uh, request. Okay, and that is going to be uh, somewhat challenging. Uh, and uh, here's a true story that I have had a student. Uh, he went to UT, uh, he gained the system, he went to geoscience, he was nothing, in, he had nothing in geoscience. He was not interested in it, he had no passion in it, and he just applied for geoscience because it was an easy major to apply to. Now, he gained the system and he paid the price he was not able to stay on track of his coursework. He was not able to get a good GPA. He was hoping that he would get a good GPA and transfer out of geoscience. So he was thinking about getting the foot into the door at UT Austin, but then he got kicked out by UT Austin because he was not able to perform. He actually got a lot worse than just poor grades. So, uh, so he got kicked out by UT Austin. 
So, so just to uh, make sure that sometimes if you game the system, if you try to uh, make a plan, you make sure that you have a good backup. Uh, if you don't have a good backup, uh, it could be a disaster. So UT Austin, it is hard to change from, let's say, College of Engineering to School of Business. It's hard to change from, uh, from uh, science to uh, education. Okay, so all these colleges, they are like an independent unit. And if you want to switch from colleges to colleges, it's going to require at least 24 hours, 24 credit hours. Okay, so that's like a two semester of courses uh, that you have to take. They look at the GPA and then they select you. And some majors, for example, computer science, it is extremely competitive that you are not guaranteed to be able to switch to computer science, even though your identity would be a UT student. Internal transfer could be as difficult as an external transfer. So just make sure you know the facts before you uh, play uh, the, the game. Now, but on the other hand, uh, then you have other universities like University of Chicago, it's a lot easier because they don't require students to declare major in the first uh, one year and a half or even two years because they understand that, you know, uh, things do change from time to time. So they want to make sure that students are uh, taking all these general classes, they have time to explore, and then by the second year, they will decide their major. So you can see the difference in here, okay, from school to school. So, uh, so your action is that for juniors, if you are applying to colleges, well, maybe just want to give yourself a little heads up. Uh, find the information about internal transfer, just in case, just in case, so that you know what kind of playing field that you're at, and then you will have more information in your uh, tank. So if you happen to change your idea, then you know what to do. You would not be surprised. You would not be freaking out. So that's your action that I would recommend you to do. Okay. Now, how to choose a major. Okay. So there are different factors according to research. Okay. The source is right down below on the left. So I look at some research and see what kind of factors would affect a student choosing their major. And here are some of them. Okay. So your internal uh, desire. Okay, parents, peer, okay, uh, the, uh, the introductory courses, okay, so maybe it's easy, it's easy to do, uh, do, do business, so let's go ahead and do it, all right, potential job characteristics, okay, my mom pushed me to become a pharmacist at the beginning without knowing very much about pharmacy, and uh, that's what I was thinking about doing, and then it did not turn out that way. Uh, and then the characteristics of the major. Some people may choose the major because it's challenging, because it's interesting, because it's easy, all kinds of reason uh, that would go into this decision of selecting your major, okay? So if you choose your major right, okay? So here are some good consequences, okay? So uh, you get better grades because you're engaged, okay? You will stay in the major and you will actually go deeper in the major. You would graduate on time. I did not. I spent one extra year at UT Austin. It was not a pleasant year. Okay, as much as people say college is, college is fun, the final year, the fifth year, the fifth year senior, the super senior year, it's not fun at all. No, okay. And even my professor would tell me that, uh, that when you have too much of a good stuff, it becomes a poison. And I agreed totally the moment I heard about it. I agreed totally because uh, it was bad. Um, be more satisfied and successful in their career. Very true, okay? Uh, I'm very happy that I switched to uh, the teaching path of a chemistry degree. Uh, I was very happy ever since, okay? And, uh, and this is why I felt the need uh, for me to share my experience in going through this college path for my fellow students so that you could walk a better path, better path than I do, okay? And so you would be more successful than I do, and you'll be more of a contributor okay, to the society than I do, then I'll be very proud of you. But how? How can we, uh, how can we uh, 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 capture this, uh, this uh, these, how can we do this uh, thing right, okay? Uh, hold on, I need to uh, reshare the screen just a second. It's not responding well. Um, sorry, 
uh, let me just share this again and right here all right so how how can we do it okay how can we do it so there are some tools that actually you can use to uh to help you tell what uh, uh what you can do to uh pick the right major so first step is to know thyself know yourself very well and sometimes it's hard to know yourself like you don't even know what you want okay and, and that would be my feeling when i was as a, when i was a high school teenager that i didn't really know what i wanted to be maybe chemistry but that's really it i couldn't say for sure so i want to introduce a tool to help you out Okay, so this is the uh, John Holland's theory of careers. So this is actually based on research. And so uh, John Holland, uh, he separated the uh, careers into these six categories. So, so to help you know what you belong to or you might gear toward to, there's actually a test. So if you register, I think you did register, uh, there's an email that you received, there's a PDF. Okay, there's a PDF in the email, and there's a website that you can go there. It is, it is this website, and there's a little test that you can do after this uh, webinar. And with this test, you can actually find out uh, what kind of uh, career you may go into. And, I would, uh, and then you have a little score. You have a, like this. Okay, so for me, I have my... Uh, my, uh, my uh, categories are investigative, artistic, and social. So uh, investigative, uh, artistic, and social. Okay, so these are, uh, these six words are the categories. So I use these results and I go to the next website, which is called the uh, uh, ONET online. Again, the website is also in the email. So I pick up, uh, I just uh, select the career, select the, uh, the career that I was being tested, okay? So I'm more of a social, investigative, and artistic. So I put in here, social, artistic, investigative. Uh, it doesn't, uh, well, the result would tell you which one's the first and second and third. So you just put it in and you click go, and then the result would come out. And I would, I was, when I, when I first did it, I was very amazed. Okay, I did it like two years ago. I was very amazed how accurate this test was. As you can see, the things that I boxed with red line, and I was like, hey, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. Math teacher, environmental science teacher, uh, philosophy teacher, I give a lot of life lessons, okay? Education teachers, I wanna be a professor in the future. So, so that gives you an idea, okay? Of course, I'm not gonna be a music therapist, therapist, okay? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be an art therapist. I don't know anything about art, but at least it gives you some idea. And I think as a high school student, having some idea is very important because it gives you a start. It gives you a head start on what you could do. And so you look into it, you explore more about it. So these are the websites, okay, again, in your email. So make sure you do the test, find out the results, and just to see if it fits you, okay? And I'm not gonna say it guarantees that you will walk that path. Again, it's just a start, it's just an idea. And then the next step that I would like you to, uh, to consider is to, okay, uh, for some reason it's not responding again. Uh, hold on. Uh, okay. Okay, the second step is to look at the degree plan. Now, this is often a step that missed out by many high school students because they don't realize what a degree plan is until they go to that college. And to me, it is a very premature uh, decision to go to a specific college without looking at a degree plan. Okay, it is almost like you are going to, uh, you're applying for a job just because of the name and you don't know what your job duty is. And then you just go in there and then you'd be surprised and you don't want to be surprised for things like this. So it's very important that you look at the degree plan. I will tell you what a degree plan is. I've asked many uh, junior students and senior students, they have no idea what a degree plan is. And I was, uh, I was very worried. 
So I'm just going to say I want to apply to UT Austin chemical engineering major. So you can just go to Google and search. Okay, and that's a degree requirement. And then you just uh, click in there. You see the uh, you see the uh, you see the site. Okay, and then you scroll down and you look at all these catalog years. Okay, now why how come there are so many years? Well, they update the uh, the course catalog every two years. They review it, they revise it, and so the classes you are taking now may not be the uh, may not be the same as the upperclassmen that you see as a seniors okay in the college right now so every two three years you will see a change in catalog and you have a choice but usually we just go with the latest one so so let's just click there and then we look at a bunch of classes and this is the degree plan okay for your uh for my hypothetical chemical engineering major so these are all the classes you have to take in order for you to earn your degree. You take a look, and if you, click into, uh, if you click into those links, you may even find the syllabus. You can actually see what kind of classes, or if you don't see the syllabus from that particular school, you can just search okay, online and see what other universities are doing for the same course. Okay? For example, I want to know about, uh, I want to know more about the uh, chemical reactor analysis and design. I can just go online and search that. Search for syllabus, search for professors, search for maybe books or articles, and then to see if I'm interested in it. And to me, I'm like, oh, what is this? I, I, I don't know what a chemical reactor is. Like, uh, that's weird. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know it, I don't like it. And, and people just told me to become a chemical engineer because I can go to oil and gas company, big, big bucks and, uh, Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I should do this. Okay, so so this is the thought process. Okay, uh, and I could be the other way that would be like, oh, chemical reactor. Like, is it like those uh, nuclear reactor or like those kind of reactor? That's so cool. I want to learn more about it. Okay, uh, I want to learn more about uh, process control. I wonder what it is. Okay, I, I, I'm very uh, uh, system oriented. I want to know all these uh, details of of uh, of uh, processes well you look at more and that would give you a very true picture of your own personal preference toward that major and this is why finding uh, finding the college um, degree plan your own degree plan or you may think about multiple majors look up all the degree plans okay if you are not sure then do more to cover your own basis or else you will be very surprised and you don't want to be surprised. Okay. And, uh, and you have suggested arrangement of courses. Okay. So this is how to tell what kind of courses you take in what year. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, here's a little uh, bonus uh, information that I would say to you now as a, future college student, I would suggest you to do one thing. If you have a sequence like this, go ahead, type it into a spreadsheet. I think it is the student's utmost responsibility that, uh, that, uh, that you know what kind of courses you will be taking the following semester and possibly the rest of the school year. Like if I ask you like, hey, uh, uh, hey, John, uh, what are you going to take uh, for, when, when are you taking your, uh, your physical chemistry class? Or when are you taking the calculus three class? If you have no idea if you have to take the class or not, and or if you have no idea when you should take the class, you are on track to a disaster. You are on track to a failure, okay? When I was a college student, I had a little spreadsheet that I organized my uh, classes. And, and I was very fortunate that I had this spreadsheet. And this is why I recommend you to do it. Because I was thinking about, there, was two, there were two classes. One is called the uh, Physical Chemistry Lab, one credit hour. The other one is called the Analytical Chemistry Lab, uh, also one credit hour. And so I was telling people, that, hey, I'm going to take the uh, 
the analytical, uh, we call it ACAM, uh, analytical, analytical chemistry lab and the physical chemistry lab together in the same semester. And then an upperclassman came to me and say, dude, you're gonna kill yourself. I said, what? How? It's just two hour courses. How hard would it be? He said, no, each of those lab is gonna take you 15 hours at least a week just to do the lab report. If you do two, you have to spend like 30 hours just for those two credit hours of classwork. You are not gonna make it. Nobody can ever make it. And especially I was not very into those high level chemistry. Now I was like, oh, ooh, that's not good. Time to revise. Okay, so, so I want you to know how precious it is to have information in your hands ahead of time so that you can protect yourself. You can look ahead and protect yourself from possible dangers. Okay, it's very important. Get a spreadsheet, uh, set up a folder for your university, and then all these documents, resume, everything in it, and make sure that you put uh, all these sequences together. Okay, just look at the major. Okay, now step three. Okay, now step three is what I consider it's a very, very important uh, step. Uh, that is to ask 15 questions about your future profession. Okay, now you may not have any idea or you may not have a solid idea. You may be debating about, well, I wanna be a doctor, but at the same time wanna be an accountant. Like, can I do both? Like, like yeah, I, I don't know how to choose between these two. Okay, now if that is the case, then you do 30 questions. Okay, for every possible profession, you are going to ask 15 questions. Now, there's some questions that you may want to ask, like why 15 questions? Now, it came to me earlier this year that uh, I was talking to a parent uh, who I taught his daughter before, and she was in, uh, she is in UT Austin Business School, very famous business school, ranked number one in accounting, okay? One of the top business schools, okay? And uh, the, the father told me that uh, his daughter was not really sure what to do in the future. Now, she was very organized, she was very hardworking, she was a leader in, uh, in school, um, back in high school. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Like I thought students like her would have a pretty good idea, but it seems like that is not very indicative of, uh, of the, on the, uh, whether somebody would have a dilemma on choosing major. So, so I reflected, I reflected uh, how I decided to, uh, to, become, uh, to become a teacher or how I decided to not become a pharmacist. As I said earlier, my mom wanted me to be a pharmacist. And I realized that I was able to know how I won't be a pharmacist by asking questions. And I was very fortunate that I had a, uh, a friend, his sister, and she's a pharmacist. And I talked to her, I said, hey, what's, what is it like to be a pharmacist? And she told me the, the story, I was like, ooh, that's boring, I don't like it, okay? So, so I, and then I think about, okay, asking, asking questions would be a very important task in this process. So how many questions? I would say the more the better, but then it would scare people away. So I was thinking like 10 maybe, would asking 10 questions be enough? And I was like 10 could be a little bit too low. So I don't wanna ask 50, so I was, I was thinking that maybe 15 is a good amount, okay? So it's just my, my, uh, my suggestion that you ask 15. And I would tell you that the more the merrier. And if you can ask a lot of questions, then you probably are in the right path, okay? So I'm just asking you to, uh, to do 15 questions so that you know what to do, uh, what, what your future profession would be like. So then the next question is, all right, asking 15 questions, what should I ask? The questions that you will want to uh, put it down and make sure you write it down. Don't just think about it in your head. You have to write it down or type it up and you have to type up your answers as well. The kind of questions are not those generic questions, but genuine questions. Okay. Very genuine questions, but it could be very simple. For example, if I want to be a doctor, 
I would ask, what is the most stressful moment as a doctor? Or what is the most stressful moment as a, as a resident in medical school? Okay. And I would go ahead and find out the answer, either by asking people that I know, uh, go on to the internet. And I, sometimes, I, I tell students, sometimes Reddit is a very good source of information. You just have to know how to filter it. Okay. You may want to read books to find out more. Okay. So very genuine questions. Like I, I would like to ask, like when I decided to be a teacher, I asked quite a bunch of questions such as, how come U.S. education system always lags uh, behind uh, Asia education system or Europe, European uh, education system in terms of math and science? Like what is going on? What's wrong? And based on the nature of the question, you can tell and other people can tell if you are truly passionate about it, if you are truly in this industry. Okay, the, the quality of the questions will be very different and that would be the indicator whether or not you are strongly passionate in your field. And please do that, okay? Please do that now. It doesn't matter what grade you are, it's an ongoing process. You have a list, you can grow your list and then it will become a very helpful guidance for yourself and for others as well. And if you know, if you ask good questions, if you are getting even more interested as you ask more questions, as you find the answers, and as you find the answers, you ask even more questions, well, then you are on the right field, my friend. Okay? Because you are truly interested in the topic. And, and I always tell students, that you are not just going to college to get a diploma. That piece of paper, it's really nothing, okay? It's really nothing because it is you that is the most important piece of the product. What kind of skills would you have? What kind of knowledge do you have? That piece of paper means a little thing, okay? Yeah, it shows you where you graduated, but at the end, if you want to find a job, if you want to start a business, it all, it's all based on how, how educated you are, how skillful you are, how resourceful you are. So I don't want you to put too much uh, emphasis on that piece of paper, diploma. I want you to put more focus on what do you want to be as a person, okay? And that diploma is just a little evidence to tell people that you have gone through this path, okay? So that piece of paper is just a, a byproduct of college education. The primary product is the skills that you retain, the knowledge that you retain. So again, as you find out your answers, how are you, are you getting more interested in it? If not, then you give yourself a question to ask. Well, maybe I'm not that interested in this field. Let me think about what I want to do. Okay. And, and I would suggest students to go online and just search like books to read for blah, blah, blah students. Okay. So here we have some, uh, some uh, websites. Okay. On the left, you have books for uh, medical school students. Uh, in the middle, you have books for law students. And on the right, you have books for um, uh, mechanical engineering students. So there are tons of information online. And if you want to get inspired, if you want to find out more about your field, just Google, okay? And sometimes we are not very sensitive to what we can Google, okay? And it is, and some information, some critical information is really just one Google away, okay? So you find out all these books and you read it, uh, you find it, maybe you find some articles online and you gain more insights, onto your major. And not only now at this point, okay, this is before a college application deadline. So when you do these steps, this is not only helping you clarify your future in terms of major, it may also help you in writing your essay. Like you may think about your, uh, I can just throw a, a hypothetical scenario, you, you've uh, based on a story of uh, describe one struggle. And you can say, well, the biggest struggle so far that I've had 
as a freshman until now as a junior is what I would like to uh, what I would like to pick for my major. That you can actually um, record this whole major searching experience as your struggle. Now it's just it's not really about bragging yourself or trying to appease them, okay? But it's really about solving a very important problem for yourself that you want to have a clear idea of what major you want to go to and uh, hey it takes some work to get it done okay and, uh, and there's a little bonus information about uh, choosing university and college now uh, does my major affect uh, my school choice and it does okay it does and this is something I really want to talk to uh, students and possibly parents about this now, many students and parents, they look at the US news uh, for guidance. And it makes sense, okay? You look at the national ranking, you're like, hey, Princeton is number one, Harvard is number two, and some other ranking, like Stanford is, Stanford is number one. We have all kinds of ranking, but US news is really the go-to ranking for many people. And they will look at other colleges. They'll be like, okay, look at UT Austin, a and Rice. We'll be like, oh, UT is better than a and But then you have Aggie saying that, no, we're about the same. No, we are better than UT Austin. Like we have all these talks, right? And Rice is a lot better. We have all these talks right here. And you have Baylor, UT Dallas, uh, UH. And, and I, wanna, I wanna make one point really clear, which is that the numbers that you see right here it's not really that indicative of what you are doing in the school. It's not very indicative of the quality of the school. Okay, let me repeat. The number right here, the rank number right here, it is not perfectly indicative of what the school is like. Okay, now I'm not saying Rice is not a good school. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the number may not be as meaningful as you think. And here's the reason. Have you heard of Trinity University? Okay. I have not heard about it until I became a teacher. And the reason why I did not hear about it because it was not on the US news ranking, like from one to a hundred, it's not. But then it turns out that Trinity University is on another ranking. It's number two in the regional universities in the West. And then I'm like, wait, hold on. How come Trinity University, such a good university, it's not at the uh, US News ranking earlier. How come? Well, it turns out that these universities on the US News ranking, okay, from one to 100 or 200, these are all research universities. These are all universities that would offer a doctoral degree. But Trinity University is a class of its own. It's not a research university, but a teaching university. So the professors there are actually there to teach. They're not doing research. And that's why they gain their fame because they have exceptional, stellar professional, uh, professionals as professors. They are actually good at teaching. But in UT, for example, I went to UT. I can, I can vouch for that. At UT, many professors, they suck. At UH, some uh, chemistry for professors, they are bad. Like you may, like it, it could be, uh, you could be lucky to get one or two professors, but usually those are hot classes. They tend to fill up very quickly. And, uh, and as people told me before, in terms of the, in job market, you have one, in, one out of 10 chance, like 10% chance that you get a good boss. The other 90%, you're gonna, you are going to get a bad supervisor, bad boss. It's just a norm. And that actually could be transferred to the university context. Nine out of 10 times, you are going to have a bad professor. They don't care about you. They don't know who you are. They don't even know that you existed. Because to them, the major job is to do research. That's how they sustain their life at the university. Teaching is just, a, uh, is just an obligation for them. They don't want to, they don't, they, but they have to. So they don't care if they teach well or not. They just dump everything to the, uh, to the TAs. So, so that's a little misconception between, uh, between college ranking and the reality. 
it's a, it, uh, it may not be really correlational in, in this case. Okay, so sometimes I would say, well, give a shot. Think about Trinity University. If they give you scholarship, you may want to consider there. Good learning environment, small classes. Like if you go to UT Austin, like do you know how big the chem class is? We are in an auditorium that can sit 500 people. Okay, so in one class, one professor, there are 400 to 500 students all sitting together to, to, to get the course. Okay, to, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get the instruction. And as a student myself, I was not very encouraged to go to class because I don't feel valued. I don't feel the importance of my presence. So then I was like, uh, it's not really that fun to go to these classes. Uh, so gradually you see the, the, the classroom becoming emptier and emptier. And then at the end of the school year, uh, at, the, at, the end of the, at the end of the semester, you could have only 10 to 20% of students sitting at the auditorium. And it's sad, okay? So when you look at all these college ranking, I want you to pay very careful attention of what you are looking at. So the better ranking to you look at is that you search ranking by major, okay? You search ranking by major, and, uh, and so you are like, okay, let me go ahead and search chemical engineering ranking university. And so you have a list, okay? You have a list right here, uh, MIT is first, and then you go all the way down and you look at this, University of Minnesota at Twin Cities, okay? It's ranked number five overall. But in the national ranking, it's ranked number 76. So if you are thinking about, oh, I want to go to a, uh, a top 50 school, okay, based on US news, then you might likely miss out a good school like University of Minnesota, okay? Every single school, there's a reason why they can exist for such a long time. There are some major that are good, they are exceptionally good, okay? Like for example, is UH bad? Well, if you look at the ranking, it was pretty bad. It's 170 something. But do you know that UH social science, especially social work, it's one of the top program in the country? Okay. Do you know that UH business school, it's also as competitive as UT business school and a and business school? Okay. Now, then fame may not be as competitive, but the programs are. And that's why they would get hired at the end. And, and I understand some students and also some parents, they're like, oh, I want my kids to go to a good college, okay, so that they can job better, easier. I understand that. I understand that. But there's an argument that they have, to, uh, they have to defend, which is, so does it mean that people from other schools are not going to get hired? Well, it's not. Well, does it mean that they would have a harder path, they would get hired? Maybe not. And as an employer, if I'm the employer, I don't really care about the name. Maybe there's a little, like if I, if I see somebody who is from UT, I may get the initial positive feeling. But if I'm the employer, I look at the real substance. Is this person capable of helping me finishing the tasks that I want him to finish or I want her to finish? If he or she is not capable, I'm not hiring, okay? So I want you to understand the, the importance of choosing college and, and just make sure that you have the right mindset to select college. Uh, another one, Purdue University, okay? It's not really a high ranked university, but do you know that they have the best, one of the best programs in, uh, in uh, aeronautical engineering, okay? So every single school has something, okay? Like you don't want to go to MIT to study English. Like MIT is a great school, but you don't go there to study English. You may want to go to some liberal arts school to study English, okay? You may want to go to somewhere, somewhere else to study journalism, but not MIT, not Caltech, okay? So, so I want you to understand that ranking, it's very important in terms of the major. Nationally, not so much. And uh, another thing is uh, to search the ranking based on the doctoral degree. Now, that would be a better indicator, okay? Because if the doctoral degree is competitive, then 
you may have a better chance to follow some graduate students or professors to do research. You could have a better prospect in that field if you have that opportunity to do research. Okay, so if you want to search for a ranking, make sure you learn how to search it uh, carefully so that you are not being swayed by others. You're not just blindly look at some meaning, somewhat meaningful numbers. Okay, uh, so doctorate degree, okay, search that. That would be very, uh, very important. Now, very often students would ask me a question. Should I choose a minor? Okay, I'm not sure about you. Uh, now, usually the intent of choosing a minor is that uh, they want to have something extra to show on their transcript, to show on the resume. And I made a little chart right here, a little flow chart right here. On, so you choose a minor, okay? Now, my primary concern is whether or not you can graduate on time. If you can grad, you can. If you can still graduate on time, then yeah, you may want to entertain that idea. If you cannot graduate on time in four years, then drop it. It's not worth it, and and I can explain to you why it's not worth it. Now, uh, it, I mean, it's important to become more skillful, okay? And I believe that you can learn outside of school, okay? And having the minor being shown on the, uh, on the transcript, it's not really that much of an appeal to employers. Because at the end, I'm gonna ask a question, like what do you know how to do uh, on this thing? On this, uh, let's just say um, uh, your minor is in computer science. So okay, I'm, okay I'm, uh, I'm slightly impressed by that and I'm gonna ask you some computer science questions. And if your response doesn't add up, I don't care if you get a minor in CS or whatever major you have, okay? So it's actually important to learn, but whether you have the major, uh, have the minor or not, it's not that important. And I would be even more impressed if you don't have the minor and yet you know more about some other content because that shows me how curious you are. That shows how motivated you are and that shows how, how, uh, how diligent you are in terms of pursuing some goals. I'll be more impressed if you don't have that minor, but you know extra stuff, okay? Like when I was, uh, when I was uh, applying for, like I don't have a minor at all. I don't have a second major. Uh, and that go, same thing goes with second major, okay? You can switch out the minor, just put in second major, same thing. Um, uh, but I know quite a bit of computer stuff. And that actually helps out a lot in my teaching path. And I was surprised how many teachers, they actually do not know how to utilize those computer tools. And I think uh, uh, some part of the statement would be true right now when, the, when there are Schoology assignments and it's a mess. And I was like, oh. I mean, it's not that hard, but how come people can make it so hard for themselves and for the students? Okay, so learn more stuff. That's my message here. Learn more stuff as a student. Okay, learn more stuff at any, learn more stuff at any time. And here's another thing too. Uh, I always tell students this. As a teacher, I can only tell you that learning is beneficial for you. And I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how or when your knowledge will be useful in the future. I just cannot tell you that. But I can tell you that you will appreciate yourself that you know those stuff when you get the opportunity to apply it, okay? I cannot tell you when you're gonna use exponential function. I cannot tell you. But then if you know exponential function, then you look at the pandemic, you look at the COVID-19, those graphs, the cases, You'd be like, whoa, it's an exponential function. It seems like it's going to go higher. It doesn't seem like Easter is going to cut it. There's no way. And uh, if you know calculus, then you will be able to analyze even more. And this is how knowledge can help you, uh, knowledge can help you um, uh, make decisions better and to make more sense, to have more common sense. Okay, Like, should you travel right now? 
Okay, the air tickets are very cheap. Okay, should you travel to cities that does not require you to be quarantined after you come back? And you make your judgment. And I would say, probably not. Like if you know some biology, if you know some math, then you may calculate the risk. Do you want to put your life at risk? And you think about, is my life worth $60 for the tickets? Like the $60 for the ticket may put you in a very bad position and you don't want to do that. So this is how knowledge would help you. Okay, so keep learning. Keep learning. Uh, it would always be useful to your career. I promise you. Okay, now, and he's the, uh, he's the, he's the message I wanna, want you to take away. Uh, and it actually uh, inspired me by a student. Uh, one time, there was a former student, we were at a Starbucks uh, on Sweetwater. And uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was a junior, second semester. He did some internship before. He was telling me that, uh, Mr. Chan, I'm so bored. I just wanna go out and work. I just wanna make money. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm done with school already. And I said, okay. All right, I can feel you. I can see how, how excited you are to be a professional in the, uh, in the job market. I can see how you are ready to, uh, to make money. But here's the thing. You have to admit a fact that, and we all have to admit a fact that as a student, as a high school student, we are not an expert. We are not. Like the time that we spend in learning whatever that you're learning, it simply would not allow us as high school students to be an expert. And if you want to be successful, you need to be an expert. So going through college, getting a diploma, getting your bachelor degree, it's just a path for you to become a mini expert. You are not going to change the world by finishing your bachelor. Okay. Now, again, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying that you should not change the world, but I'm just saying that by finishing your bachelor degree, you are still not fully capable of changing the world. You need to keep learning. You have to put in way more hours. Now, if you say you become a college, uh, you are, you know, in college, you're in college, you're going through your bachelor degree, and you spend your days and nights to uh, do research, you put in uh, 16 hours of work every single day. Now, then, then we are talking. Then you can become an expert of some sort at the end, at the end of your bachelor years because you put in the hours. And if you uh, read The uh, Outlier uh, from uh, Malcolm Gladwell, you can search online, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, the 10,000 hour rule, okay? Uh, I believe in it. I, I, uh, I agree with it. If you want to be an expert, put 10 hours, I want to put 10,000 hours into that topic, okay? Uh, when do you start? It's up to you. You can start today, you can start tomorrow, you can wait until whenever you start it. But you have to clock in 10,000 hours in order to become an expert. How many hours, how many years would 10,000 hours take? Roughly eight to 10 years, depending on how many hours you put in each day. And I will tell you that I will not be able to, uh, to speak uh, much okay, uh, in, uh, after, in teaching just one or two years. After teaching for five, eight, and 10 years, I felt like I know more about the ins and outs of education. I still have a, I still have a lot to learn. I'm still curious about education. So, and I still want to become a better expert in it. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. You are trying to become a mini expert and think about how you will make that happen. So the conclusions are here. So first, it's very important that what you truly love and the emphasis is on love, and I do mean love. There's no love without sacrifice. You are going to sacrifice. If you are not willing to sacrifice, then you are not loving it, period, okay? And only by doing what you love and what you like then you can enjoy it. If you are not liking it, if you are not loving it, then you will not enjoy it and you would not do a good job about it. Okay, so I want you to understand the logic. You want to be good, you want to become an expert, you have to love it. I have yet to hear from any stories that somebody would hate their profession and yet 
they are very good at it. I just have not heard about it in my life. If you know somebody is like this, then let me know. Share his story or her story with me, because I don't think it this would ever exist. Okay, uh, your life will be miserable. Okay, uh, if you just follow the uh, if you are just following the crowd. Okay, your life will be miserable. Okay, and I'm not kidding. Because uh, if you're just following, okay, if you say, oh, yeah, computer science is good. Uh, a lot of people making big money. Okay, so I'm going to go to do uh, computer science. Then you are following. And your life will be miserable because you are, this idea of doing this major, it's not coming from you internally and genuinely. And eventually, there will be a moment of awakening and think about, well, um, why am I doing this? I should have changed to another major. I don't quite enjoy it. And I don't want you to be in that moment, okay, in that position. That's not good, okay? And it's okay to not know your major at the moment, okay? But you have to do your research. You have to start searching it. It's a trial and error process, okay? It is. Uh, you cannot... Uh, you cannot just wait and wait and hope that something would just dawn on you and think about, oh, yeah, I have an inspiration. I just have a message. I have a calling that I will be, some, I will be something. No, nope, life doesn't work that way. You have to start searching so that you can find your own destination. And last, now, this is what I, uh, this is what I always tell students, too, and I would like to share this with you. Now, you want to make yourself to become a unique, resourceful, and irreplaceable person. I repeat, I repeat, you want to make yourself a unique, resourceful, and irreplaceable person. Now, here's the logic that I want to share with you here. Why should you be unique, resourceful, and irreplaceable? Now, think about a job market, okay? So... You, you graduate, you find a job, you get hired. Now, as, a as an employee, your job is to, you know, solve problems for the employer. Whatever problem it is, you solve it. And if you develop a very unique position, okay, with your role, and you are exceptional in terms of your skills, you are friendly, you are very resourceful because you know a lot of stuff. You know programming, you know how to do accounting, you know how to uh, read the financial market, you know all kinds of stuff, okay? Well, then you make yourself irreplaceable because by replacing you, the company would have to lose more. Like by replacing you, the employer would have to, you know, spend double the money to hire two people to do your job. Well, that doesn't make sound financial sense. So if you can do more, if you make yourself truly unique, then you secure yourself at a very good position that, uh, that, uh, that you will not have to worry about your job future. Okay, so you are just, oh, uh, you are just um, playing the game and you are a very unique, valuable resource that nobody is going to take it away from you. So keep that in mind. Be unique, be resourceful, and be irreplaceable. Now, uh, this is the end. Uh, if you want to re uh, review, please go to my YouTube channel. Okay. And if you have any question, you're more than welcome to email me. Just throw the question at me and uh, we can talk, we can chat. I can give you some questions to think of. Uh, I can guide you with some resources. Okay. We can help find this together. Uh, I would like to uh, help you to find a better future. Okay. So, uh, so this is it. I hope you have a great Sunday evening and stay home, stay safe. And uh, hope to uh, uh, share more information with you uh, very soon in the near future. Okay. Bye-bye.